Hey, AP Euro students, this is Mr. Iglesias, and uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the trial of Galileo Galilei. Uh, so uh, we're talking, as most of you probably have already covered, or at least are covering it soon, uh, the scientific revolution uh, introduces all these new ideas and new interpretations about the way the world operates and the way nature works. And uh, Galileo, of course, was among one of the many important um, astronomers who had looked toward the heaven to come up with a, a new interpretation of how the world, uh, how the world fit into the universe. Um, so let's get to take a look at this um, PowerPoint I have. So uh, this image shows Galileo before the Inquisition uh, in Rome. Uh, being questioned on his beliefs. And I want to kind of look at why this was so important, how this affected the scientific revolution, and kind of the impact it had on uh, the church itself. So Galileo was not, the, this was not the first time, Galileo's trial actually happens in the 1630s, but back in the 16, in 1616, he had already gotten himself into a bit of trouble. Um, remember, he was uh, introduced to these, these new magnifying glasses that he then turned into these really powerful telescopes, which allowed him to look heaven, toward the heavens and see the celestial bodies. And in doing so, he learned that the moon and the planets uh, were not made of this kind of uh, ethereal, perfect material that the church said they were, that they weren't smooth, round, or spherical uh, things up in the skies, that they actually had mountains and craters, and their surface looked a lot like the Earth's. Um, he also uh, began to speak as if uh, the Copernican theory of helios, uh, the heliocentric theory was actually uh, true and correct. And of course, uh, the Catholic Church uh, did not support this, although many scientists or astronomers and philosophers at the time had pretty much by this time come to the conclusion that an Earth-centered universe was not too likely. Um, the Catholic Church argued that uh, through certain readings of the Bible, they had evidence that God had created the Earth and put it in the center of the universe and that the sun went around the earth. Now, when Copernicus was first confronted by the Inquisition in Rome, and they questioned him about this uh, promoting of the Copernican theory, he defended himself by saying he was not trying to promote it or believe or proved or you know, argue that he believed in it. All he was trying to do was put out a, a, a theory for discussion. So he was able to get away with that. Things improved for Galileo. He was already, remember, a, a, a very famous uh, mathematician. He held a high position at the University of Padua. He, um, he was certainly an important influential character in intellectual history at the time. And things seemed to improve for him when Pope Urban VIII became Pope in 1623. Uh, he seemed to be sympathetic to Galileo and uh, was an acquaintance of him spoke to him, and even gave him permission to produce more uh, books that spoke of the Copernican theory, as long as they did not promote the Copernican theory. So Galileo was encouraged to write this book, The Dialogue of the Two World Systems, Ptolemaic and Copernican. And in this book, he uh, depicted a conversation between three people. One was uh, Salviati, who was someone who supported Copernicus. One was Sagredo, who was kind of in between. He was open-minded. He, he acted more like a, a moderator in between. And one was Simplicio. Now, this was a person that clearly was taking the side of the church. Now, throughout this book, it became very clear that the intelligent, logical, reasonable person was Salviati and that this simple-minded kind of uh, ignorant person was this Simplicio. And 
a lot of people spoke to Pope Urban and said, you realize, of course, he is ridiculing you, that you are actually simply you. Well, this, of course, stirred up all sorts of trouble. And um, the, the church was now ready to bring charges against him in 1633. So what proof did the church have? Well, obviously they had the book. Um, they also found uh, letters to Johannes Kepler and other German astronomers that seemed to say that um, the heliocentric sy system was the correct answer to understanding the universe. They also found that uh, letters to Queen Christina of Sweden, who was uh, an ardent supporter of a lot of these uh, natural philosophers, uh, also said the same thing. And then when they looked back at his, at his uh, book, Starry Messenger, again, they found more evidence that this guy seemed to be promoting Copernican theory. So why was this such a big problem? Well, this was bad timing because the Reformation had already reduced the power of the church by the 1630s. I remember at this point, the people in England followed the Anglican church. Much of Northern Europe is uh, Lutheran, uh, and then you have Calvinism spreading all over. Uh, you're also right in the midst of the Thirty Years' War, uh, clearly a battle that the church is kind of, that the church considers a religious war uh, in an attempt to try to bring people back to the Catholic faith. Um, and one of the main things that the church had uh, insisted upon after the, uh, the Council of Trent was that only they could interpret scripture. Whereas, of course, reformers argued that everybody should be reading the Bible and interpreting it. The Catholic Church argued only uh, priests and popes and folks like this uh, could interpret scripture. And Galileo's ideas went against what the church said uh, was true from the Bible. So it was kind of uh, they had almost no choice in the matter when Galileo presented this argument one more time in favor of heliocentrism. At the trial in 1633, uh, Galileo was brought before the Inquisition and accused of heresy. Um, the Pope, of course, felt that he had been betrayed by Galileo, as Galileo had been, uh, had been kind of an acquaintance of his. He didn't understand why Galileo would do this. Um, the church demanded that Galileo recant and deny that uh, whatever he was saying about the heliocentric theory was false. And uh, Galileo was found guilty of heresy eventually, having very little time to prove, you know, and very little opportunity to actually prove his side of the argument. Um, but at one point during the trial, when many of these uh, inquisitors were sitting there arguing with him, about the formation and the look of the planets, Galileo actually demanded an opportunity to show them through his telescope that the planets were just as he claimed, that they were rough, that they had mountains, they had craters, they had a surface much like the earth. Um, he was given the opportunity to go up to a tower to have some of these inquisitors actually look through the telescope and see for themselves. Instead of proving that Galileo was right, it actually caused many of these inquisitors to then attack him as some kind of a witch who had found some kind of magic stick that could confuse uh, these people and make them think they were saying what really wasn't true. So he really had no chance of defending himself. Um, so Galileo, after being found guilty, was supposedly uh, led out of the room and legend has it that he muttered this phrase in Italian, eppur si muovo, and yet it moves. Basically saying, okay, because he did deny that he was right. He stood before the Inquis Inquisition and said, okay, I'm wrong, you're right. The, the Copernican theory is wrong, but it's kind of like as they were taking him out, some people argue what he said was, but I really am right. Um, his original sentence was that he would be imprisoned for however long the church wanted to put him in prison. At this point, he's 70 years old. So that's not gonna be much longer in his life. Um, because he did recant, he was given a lesser sentence, basically life under house arrest. 
which for him lasted another seven years. Of course, his two dialogues was placed on the index of forbidden books. Um, it, had already, it already had been, and um, that just made it something that more astronomers wanted to read. And it wasn't until 1992 that uh, finally um, Galileo's name was cleared of charges uh, by the Catholic Church formally. So uh, the Catholic Church stuck to this argument for a long time and didn't bother to fix it. So why this matters? Well, by many, this is seen by many as kind of the unofficial end of the Renaissance and the unofficial beginning of the scientific revolution. Um, it's at this point where the scientific revolution is kind of in full swing. Um, the other thing that happens here is that Italy, which had been kind of the center of the studies of the heavens and everything, along with some German astronomers, was basically forced, you know, the Italian astronomers were basically forced to stop their study of the Copernican theory. And from that point forward, nearly all advances made in astronomy would take place in England, in Germany, in the Netherlands, and places like that. But I think most importantly, what this did was give further evidence that the church was uh, stuck in the past and stubborn and absolutely un willing to accept any kind of change and modernization. And so while places like Italy and Spain continue to be dominated by Catholicism, um, their outdated ideas simply didn't allow for their cultures to make advancements like were being made in other places. A great exception would be someplace like France where uh, Louis XIV was uh, actually sponsoring and paying by the late 1600s paying for these uh, scientists to do all these studies. He was actually totally for all of this, uh, even though he was a very staunch Catholic. But the Catholic Church in general uh, was proving it's a kind of backwardness that was going to pretty much remove any of the advancements in the technology that could be taking place from the Mediterranean part of Europe and moving it all northward. So uh, in general, uh, th this, uh, this had this profound effect on the battle between religion and science. It kind of summed it all up. Um, and science was clearly going to win this battle, even though this was a, a, sh a small victory for the Catholic Church. It really didn't make things better for them. So um, for my students, I know they're reading more on the, the battles between religion and science. Uh, and you'll find more information in your textbook about what's happening between these two forces in the 17th century.